Hey, this is Tom McElroy at wildsurvivalskills.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to weave a fish trap. Okay, in order to make a fish basket, you're going to need some sort of weavers like vines or rootlets. Today, what I'm gonna be using are willow shoots. And these are collected near a stream where willow often are found. And if you find a spot where a willow falls down but the roots are still intact, it's gonna send up a ton of these suckers. And you can go around and collect them. In the first year, they don't have very many branches coming off of them, so they're gonna make really nice, long, straight weavers. To begin your basket, you're gonna get six to eight um, sections of the thicker willow, just a little bit of the thicker bases. You want the spokes of your basket to be a little bit thicker than the weavers. I'm gonna divide those up into three and three to make the bottom of the basket. I'm not just gonna lay them one over the other in a star pattern. I'm gonna do three to three or four to four like that and spread them out as I go. Now to start this pattern, I'm gonna take one stick, split it down the middle so that it's open, just in the middle of that stick. Now I'm gonna take one of the sticks I chose for the cross piece and it's gonna stick right through the middle. By doing it this way, your basket's gonna lie extremely flat so that you can set it down on the ground and it won't topple over. It also makes a stronger base in total. We've got three going this way, three going this way, and a split right in the middle of three of those six. And it holds it together and makes a nice flat bottom. All right, the next step I'm gonna show you is the really basic weave that you need for this. Everybody knows that a basket is basically over, under, over, under with your weavers compared to your spokes. Um, so I'm gonna get two of my thin willow stalks and then insert them just into that split somewhere. Now from here, one of these weavers is going to go over, the other is gonna go under three. And now they're gonna switch places. So this is what I call a figure eight weave. So they've both gone over under, now the one that went under is gonna go over, and the one that went over here is gonna go under the next three. And they keep crisscrossing each other like figure eights or infinity signs, but in a square. Okay, so this one was under, now it's gonna come over. This one's gonna go under. So every three for a couple trips around, maybe two times around, I'm gonna go over all three. Pulling tight every time, giving myself that little square. Okay, now that I've gone around twice, I'm gonna start pulling these spokes apart. So instead of just making a cross, they're gonna come out like the spokes of the tire. So these are all gonna get pulled apart. All right, now that you look at this, you can see that these spokes are starting to split up. And that's because I'm not going over and under three, over and under three, over and under three, over and under three. I'm going over and under two, over and under two, over and under two. And each time I do that, I'm pulling in the sides a little bit. As you're going around at the corners here, at the edges where there's space, you really want to make sure when you're wrapping those two that you pull them in so that this basket really starts to spread itself out. I'm not going over every two anymore, I'm going through every one. So every single one of these spokes, one of the weavers goes over, the other one goes under, and then they switch, switch, switch every time I go around. All right, I have the base done. So what I'm gonna do is flip it to the upside, and now I'm gonna add my stakes that are gonna create the structure of the basket. I'm not actually gonna use these, those will eventually get cut off. What I'm gonna do is find some nice strong spokes and I'm gonna stick them in by each side of the spokes that are currently sticking out. <laughs> so just jam them in as far as you can. Take another one and jam it into the other side. 
Now all I need to do is go around each one of these spokes and add two more beside it. Eventually I will cut these ones off. All right, once you've got your spokes put in, going all the way around, you're gonna start to bend them up. Now instead of just grabbing one and prying it up, what you're gonna do is put a little slash going vertically into that long spoke. If you can do that, jam that in there, that little slash right there is gonna help relieve some of the pressure so that when you bend it up, it doesn't break. Now you might notice in this video I'm doing different patterns of weaving. For the sake of this video, I feel like that's a little too complicated, so I'm just gonna tell you to do what I'm doing here, but use the figure eight weave. Um, just over, under, over, under, you know, with two strands, one's under, one's over each time. Um, you're gonna be able to work your way up, and at this point, this is gonna go a lot faster. It's gonna take hours, but it's just a lot of repetitive motion until I get the basket I want. So the basket's definitely starting to take shape. I'm just going over, under, over, under. Now when I want to insert a couple more spokes, what I'm gonna do, I stick one in between two spokes and I stick the other in just before it where the other ones ran out. And now what they're gonna do is just cross over in the figure eight. So this one goes over this while the other one goes under it. And pull through. Then they cross over again. This was over last time, now it goes under and the other one goes on top. So this is about the height of the basket that I want. Um, what I need to do now is to make the rim. And instead of just using the weavers to do that, what I'm gonna do is actually bend down the spokes and weave them into the basket. What that's gonna do is lock down the weavers so they can never pop out and it's gonna make a really nice, strong, sturdy rim. A very simple way to do this is to bend your spokes to the right. Go over one, under one, over one, and out. From there, I'm just gonna make a smaller basket, funnel shape with the exact same principles I've already shown you. And that's gonna go inside to make the funnel for the fish trap. actually show you that this thing worked. So I'm gonna tie a rock to the bottom of this to make sure that when I put it in the water, it stays submerged. Um, the inner cone here, I've sharpened up these little spikes of willow that are poking out so that'll discourage the fish from trying to get out through that narrow hole. So when the fish come in through this inner basket, it's gonna funnel them perfectly into the center, but when they're inside, it's gonna be very difficult to thread the needle to get out. I have a GoPro in the back of the basket, so we're gonna be able to watch from underwater as fish enter and hopefully don't exit. From this, we'll kind of get to see the behavior of the fish and why they don't actually get out of the trap.
Fish will be channeled into the trap from one direction and funneled in, but won't be able to thread the needle on their way out. You can see how the bass clings to the edges of the basket, never going straight down the center. The sticks poking in are somewhat sharp, discouraging the fish from even trying. Instead, the fish hang out at the inside edge where the inside cone meets the outside basket. A few hours later, it's time to collect. this to work you're golden in the survival situation and whatever energy you put into it was well worth it so thank you very much for watching please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube page check out my Facebook and come take a class my schedule is on wildsurvivalskills.com